This is the future. Evolution. This is the future. Hello my fellow Dream Chasers and hello to fellow Disney fans across the world. Welcome to the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation where, with this lockdown going on, we might as well isolate ourselves with the magic of uh, Disney. Now, one thing I need to stress uh, beforehand, I am recording this before I record Pinocchio because I was meant to do Pinocchio yesterday but uh, I, needed a bit of, I needed a bit of time to... Um, uh, to take care of myself with uh, with everything that's been going on away from what's been going on uh, recently. But nevertheless, we're here for Fantasia uh, today. An interesting little factoid about this film before we get started is this was the first film to be done in surround sound. So anyway, um, and um, uh, if you hear background noise, that's just my washing machine on the go. But that, all that aside, uh, with uh, uh, my guest for today's episode is uh, Tegan Gurley. Tegan, welcome along to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I say, I, say, um, I, say, I will be doing my best to get as many guests on. Uh, I say, I will try my best to get guests on for each um, uh, for each film. Uh, if I end up having um, uh, repeat guests. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay. It mean, it means more expo means more exposure for them. Uh, but uh, but yeah. Um, for those that don't know uh, how this series works, it's it works basically the same as how my um, film review series works, where I take a film, I talk through the um, the four aspects, five in this case: uh, story, characters, visuals, soundtrack, and uh, the fifth the, and uh, the fifth uh, subject for this series test of time how well these films hold up today. So uh, as I've mentioned we're doing Fantasia uh, today and it is definitely one of the more unique Disney films that I've seen and I actually got inspired to do this series because Disney Plus launched this time last week at time of recording. I'm recording this on March 31st but this episode will not be up until I've done Pinocchio. So anyway, uh, so before we get started, uh, what are your initial thoughts on uh, Fantasia, Tegan? Fantasia, for me, always sticks out in my mind very vividly as one of the movies that I watched a lot during my childhood. Um, and I actually use it a lot in my uh, teaching, because I am a, a drama teacher a youth year teacher uh, to uh, primary school uh, children, although I, I, I would be, but you know, coronavirus, lockdown, yeah. I'm not doing that just now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but I actually reference Fantasia a lot when I do music association with my kids oh. um, as a great way to kind of get them to listen to a piece of music and then think of a picture in their heads and put that into uh, a drama scene or put it into a movement piece. Or even just tell me what they think um, the characters might be feeling whilst that song is being used in like a movie scene in their heads. Um, it, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's interesting. Uh, so the in interesting things I find out about my guests. Uh, I mean, it's not the first time I've done stuff like that as well. I mean, um, I mean, even if I'm listening to even if I'm listening to like uh, a film soundtrack to a film that I've not seen before, uh, like uh, with uh, with the Lion King remake that came out last year, I listened to the soundtrack before I actually went to see the film and I could visualize beat for beat how it was all going to play out, especially the Wildebeest Stampede sequence. That's probably my favorite scene out of uh, both Lion King films. Don't worry, I'll get to the Lion King eventually, folks. Still got a long road ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. The Stampede but scene is iconic though and yeah. I think it is mainly to do with the soundtrack even just the the classical version I've not seen the remake yeah. yet um, sadly enough 
Mm -hmm. I've not managed to see it yet. Um, but yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you that the stampede scene is mm -hmm. a very pivotal moment in the story and also in the film because the the pacing of the film mm -hmm. um, increases immediately almost. You're, it gets you sitting on the edge of your seat. Um, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it, it gets your adrenaline going. So it does all those good things after seeing all the really happy stuff about Simba being born, etc., etc., etc. And then it completely takes a left turn at that point in the film. Yeah, and massive kudos to Hans, Hans Zimmer, one of my, uh, probably one of, if not my favourite composer uh, in the film industry. Oh, yeah. I mean, his re I mean, he's got one of those resumes, like John Williams, that pretty much speaks for itself. But enough about Lion King, let's, uh, stick, yeah. to, let's stick to Fantasia. Uh, um, like I said in the last, like I said during Snow White, folks, uh, don't worry if we end up going off topic from the film altogether, but... That's that's what that's what makes that's what makes these things that's what makes it so. That's what makes these episodes stand out. That you actually that we actually talk about other uh, Disney films. But but anyway, uh, so um, how do we start with this one? Because uh, we, I mean, it's it's essentially like a combination of live action and animation, and it's classed as a full-length animated film because the live action sequences they're just Deems Taylor who is the master of ceremonies uh, he's the one that's introducing each of the segments and there mm -hmm. are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, segments all together well technically eight because uh, the last segments split into two um, so eight different segments throughout uh, throughout the film I see the film's like just over two hours long and for 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 disney doing a film that long compared to what they did previously with pinocchio and snow white only being like an hour and a half long sitting through fantasia for two hours it looking back on it 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 is initially a bit of a a bit of a it does feel like a bit of a grind initially to get through it and that's why during the original release that there was a 15 minute interval to allow the audience to stretch their legs and uh, head to the uh, uh, concessions lobby if they wanted to mm -hmm. but and, and then of course and then of course last year you had Avengers Endgame three hours long and you've got and you've got the dedicated ones that managed to get through the entire film I'm one of them got through the entire film without needing to um, take a comfort break. Uh, again, it's another film I've not seen. I'm not really a regular cinema goer myself. I tend yeah. to, to wait for things to, to come out on Sky or Netflix. So <laughs> of course. Shame me if you like, I don't mind. Uh, yeah. Um, but with the, the, the whole length of, of, the, of the Fantasia itself, mm -hmm. the more you kind of watch it, the more you get used to it and your brain ends up telling you that they're just lots of little short stories and yeah so it doesn't really feel like to it, it can feel like it's not two hours long because when you tell somebody oh i have this film it's fantasia it's two hours long immediately people are going to go oh right okay i'm going to need a break at least halfway through this but then if you're somebody that gets so involved in the story and mm -hmm. the animation and the, the the pieces of music itself absolutely it, 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 you, you're just able to sit all the way through it and it becomes a really enjoyable experience Absolutely, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, so let's so let's talk briefly about each of um, uh, the segments, and uh, hope and hopefully uh, during the editing process, I can try and get various clips of the music used in the um, in these uh, segments. Hopefully, I can get them. I mean, a majority of it, a majority of the um, a majority of the um, a majority of the segments, it's classical music, so shouldn't have any issues regarding uh, copyright in theory, hopefully. But uh, yeah. nevertheless, the first segment, and uh, the conductor, by the way, folks, is uh, Maestro Leopold Stokowski, who, on top of uh, on top of Walt himself, managed, they both managed to get uh, honorary Oscars for their contribution towards Fantasia. Hmm. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, so, some of these factoids that I'm coming out with, they are selected for one of the first films to be done in surround sound. Um, I got all that from watching um, uh, this, guy, uh, called, this guy called Animat, who did uh, an animation look back series, uh, going through all the uh, Disney films from Snow White up to Princess and the Frog at the time. Uh, but anyway, uh, but anyway, uh, as, uh, yeah, as, as I like to say, uh, hold up a second, I think I may, ah, yeah, my camera got disconnected, bear with me, but yeah, sorry about that, folks, uh, um, uh, I think I might have, uh, knocked my, my camera loose, slightly, but, uh, but anyway, uh, the segments, let's get through those. Now, um, I didn't have time to get any notes uh, put together uh, for this because, again, I just need I needed uh, to take time for myself to uh, rest and recuperate with uh, with everything going on right now. Uh, the first segment, uh, Toccata and Fugue in D minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. He he's one of the one of the most prolific uh, composers of the uh, Baroque musical period, and it's. Uh, it's essentially live action shots of the orchestra illuminated in blue and gold backed by superimposed shadows fading into abstract patterns, animated lines, shapes and cloud formations to reflect the sound and rhythms of the music, which is basically what you were, which is basically what you were mentioning um, earlier before we actually yeah. started uh, going through each of the segments. Mm hmm. And it's it is always very impressive to see how the because I mean, the animators will already have the music at this point. They just need to do the animation to go with it. And normally it's and normally when it comes to doing film composing, normally it's the other way around. You have the film f itself first, and then you make the music to go around it. Mm -hmm. But. But not for not in this case. You've already got the music. You just need to ha do the animation to go with it. Yeah, I think what I've, I, I personally love about the first section uh, with the it being the live action is it kind of sets the the pace for the whole film immediately. You're yeah. already telling possibly uh, young um, people, children mm -hmm. who are watching this film for the first time. Right, this is a piece that you can enjoy audio, um, audibly and also visually. And yeah. um, again, I'm, 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 I'll refer to my teaching quite a lot in this, unfortunately. That's um, fine. When uh, I do music association with my kids and I play them something that's maybe a little percussion, mm -hmm. I'll then get the kids to physicalize that sound. And so I think that first section is really clever with that they did the animation and how they lit the musicians in the particular ways and using particular colours. And then that way that teaches kids what they can maybe associate with those sounds in the future. So with percussion and harsher sounds, you'll get stronger colours, like maybe a, a, a bright orange maybe, or you know, lots of flashing, lots of sharp lines. And then for maybe more wind instruments, you're maybe getting a softer sound, a softer picture, smoother sort of lines, that that sort of thing. Yeah. You'll see. It's in, like and like I said earlier, it is just it's amazing how they're able to get the to get the animation to go with the music uh, rather than. Uh, the other way around. So massive kudos to the animators for that. Um, I, I, I do remember at one point where they have. Um, I was like, this is going back to my school days um, in music. Uh, listening, listening to one particular piece of music. Um, I was like, just, I was like, visualizing in my mind how, like, a, a scene from like a scene from a movie would play out. Uh, there's, and there's one particular moment in one piece of music that I listened to, I can't remember what piece it was specifically, but mm -hmm. it's where you've got, where I visualised it as a character running, and they're at the edge of, and they, and they reach the, uh, a cliff edge, and there's just mm -hmm. this huge wall of water, 
below them, and then it's just the, it's just um, I'll say a huge striking note, and then just a gradual uh, uh, dissension through the uh, through the notes. At that point, I visualized them diving into that water. Mhm. Mm that's a great visualization for that. I would have thought. Yeah. See, see, and uh, yeah, um, I say, and and that, and that's, and that's pretty much what we've, and that's pretty much like Tegan's just said, that pretty much sets, sets the atmosphere for, the entire film just with that opening, section. Now the next section we've got it is uh, probably the most probably one of the one of the more famous um, uh, segments in uh, in Fantasia. There's there's a couple of others that we'll get into um, shortly. Uh, the first because I feel there's three particular segments in this film that stand out <laughs> above the rest because they. They're the ones that often get talked about uh, the most. Uh, yeah. The first one is the next segment after the Takato and Fugue. It's, of course, the Nutcracker Suite. Mm. I mean, what I mean, what could be said about the Nutcracker that hasn't already been um, hasn't been said? It's it's one of the most iconic pieces of uh, ballet music of all time, and there's yeah. And there's actually there's six different dances throughout this in this entire segment, and the dances are the dance of the sugar plum fairy. I mean, everybody knows about that one by this point. Um, mm -hmm. You've also got the Chinese dance, the Arabian dance, the Russian dance. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to remember. Which, I'm trying to remember which ones are because. Uh, one of them, I know. I know one of them goes. Du, 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 du. I'm, I'm trying to remember that's which. The, that's the Russian dance. That's the one, because because I remember that particular, I remember that particular um, uh, bit of music being used for a for a, for a VHS trailer for uh, well at the end of the VHS trailer for the Muppet Christmas Carol. Yes. I know exactly the trailer you're meaning. Yeah, I say, I say, it was on. Um, it was on the. Um, it was one of the trailers that was featured in the UK VHS releases of The Jungle Book, and Beauty and the Beast at the time. Yeah. And then you had the. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, a lot of the um, pieces of music that are within the Nutcracker Suite are um, really cleverly put into adverts, like you were saying about the VHS advert uh, mm -hmm. for Muppet Christmas Carol, and for uh, segments in cartoons and other movies, and so that's another example of almost indoctrinating um, classical music into the minds of children, so that when they come to watch Fantasia, say they've seen everything else before this, they'll then go, oh, I recognise that from this piece of music, or I recognise that from that, that film, or oh, that's in that film. Yeah. And it's amazing how kids are able to do that, because I, I still do that. I still um, get um, bits of music uh, shown to me by my dad, and I kind of go, oh, I, I know that from that film, and I'll know the words, I'll know how the, the tune goes, and be shocked, they'll go, do you know about that? So, oh, well, that's in that <laughs> film. That's in that person. <laughs> and it's amazing yeah. how, how that happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, it's... Um... And then after the Russian dance, it's the it's the it's the dance of the f it's the dance of the flutes. After that as well, and then and then the end of this and then the end of it all, it's the waltz of the flowers. Again, another iconic piece of music from um, uh, the Nutcracker Suite. Mm -hmm. like, um, but yeah, I mean, just just for that, just yeah. So, what yeah. Was he, what were you for, for anybody that's not seen um, Fantasia, that whole Nutcracker section—it's all to do with nature. It's all um, 
and all the nature that's been taking part in the dance. So all like the Chinese dance, mm -hmm. um, for anybody that remembers it, it's danced by mushrooms. It's danced by little teeny weeny little mushrooms that have got little rainbows. Ah, yes. Um, and then you've got the Arabian dance and the Russian dance where mm -hmm. the thistles and the and the, the other uh, pansies kind of burst into colour and mm -hmm. dance and they all, they all start jumping about the place mm -hmm. and then they dance and the flutes and waltz and the flowers is another routine but it's really slow. I'm pretty, I can't remember which one it is. I don't know. I don't know if that's in, well, so, uh, in the, the Nutcracker Suite, but mm -hmm. there's one of them that's danced by fish. And I cannot remember which one it is. I think that one's the Dance of the Flutes, maybe. I think. I'm, I might... I, th I, I might I might be wrong on that one, but... Um, but, I think, but yeah, but I, say, I, I, I know the... I know the, yeah, I, know the I, I know the bit you're on about, but... Uh, but yeah. um, but yeah, but I say, but, see, yeah, but, but like you said, it's focusing, this whole segment in general, as far as the animation is concerned, is focusing on nature going through the seasons from summer all the way through to, to winter, and the variety of dances presented, uh, like you've mentioned, fish, flowers, mushrooms, leaves, and fairies as well. The fairies, obviously, because Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, oh, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, that, that, I mean, that was, that one's kind of a given. And then... And then after that, uh, this was the very first short uh, well, segment that was... It was actually released as a short initially before it got included in this film. It is, of course, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Probably the most iconic segment of the entire film. So iconic, in fact, that it actually featured in the sequel, Fantasia 2000. Another one of my favourites, personally. Yeah. I've got a lot of fond memories with Fantasia 2000 as well, but we could get into that probably in another segment, probably. <laughs> <laughs> another video altogether. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, but I mean, but I mean, again, this is another one of those segments where what can be said about it that hasn't already been said, Mickey Mouse... Ah, oh, flip, I think my camera's disconnected again. Yep, it has. One extremely annoying shift later. Yep, camera decided to disconnect again. Um, but anyway, uh, Source Wars Princess, that's where we were at. Uh, I mean, it, it's... Um, I mean, the beginning part of the, um, uh, the sequence... Um, as far as the music's concerned, that's not the bit that people really talk about as far as the music is concerned. The music they, they know about, it's... <laughs> yeah. Well done, that was a good recreation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say, and it even got featured... I say, that, that particular bit even got featured with the mobs and buckets at one point during uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It was, and it was also kind of alluded to uh, the Nicolas Cage film of The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Ah, yes. Um, I'm, I, like, I haven't actually seen, I haven't actually seen that film yet, but um, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll cover it at some point when I get round to doing the uh, uh, live action. Uh, Disney, oh yeah, Disney films. Well, the only reference to Sorcerer's Apprentice is literally the only scene where the, the actual sorcerer, who is Nicolas Cage, mm -hmm. his apprentice tries to use magic to clean up the water that has somehow flooded the basement of his, his apartment or his, his flat building. And there's a bit, there's tiny bits of the song alluded to in the kind of score that that kind of goes throughout the entire scene. But the bigger threat with that scene is that there's so much water, but the the main character um, plays about with electricity a lot and he likes he likes working with lightning. And so you're like, okay, lots of water, electricity, this is going to end very badly. And it looks like it does. And I'll not mention any more because spoilers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, uh, I, was, I, I, forgot to, I forgot to mention Spoiler alert for uh, Fantasia as well, if you've not seen it yet. Uh, I meant to put that spoiler warning in uh, before I started Snow White, and I did manage to put it in eventually. Uh, same goes, spoiler alert if you've still not seen uh, Fantasia yet. But anyway, uh, the plot of this segment in general, basically, it's Mickey Mouse, 
the, ma uh, the young apprentice to the sorcerer Yen Sid, which is actually Disney spelled backwards. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I genuinely did not know that. <laughs> ah! Yeah. That's it. That's it. Like, and, and yet, Yen Sid also makes appearance. This this one's for all the Kingdom Hearts fans out there. Yen Sid also oh, makes... Yeah. Yen Sid makes appearances in the Kingdom Hearts games. What? I know, right? <laughs> Again, did not click. I know that, like, <laughs> he is mentioned, but I did, it didn't click in my head. Oh, wait, he's actually in the games. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while since I've played, like, a few years since I've played Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Well, I'll say, well, I'll say, I've, I've actually got all uh, the Kingdom Hearts games, um... I've got them all on my PlayStation, and uh, one of my friends game shared the Kingdom Hearts series with me on his Xbox. So I've got the entire Kingdom Hearts series on both platforms. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, friends in high. Have, have a little flashy heartless. Um, ah there, yes. Um, that got given to me as a birthday present by an ex-boyfriend because he was obsessed with the games as well. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, that's like because that's because the Kingdom Hearts series, the biggest appeal for me and for a lot of a lot of us youngsters growing up at the time, the biggest appeal was the fact it had Disney characters in it. That was the biggest appeal that drew drew me into the games. But because I had because my parents got an Xbox instead of a PlayStation Two, I was never able to play the Kingdom Hearts games when they came out. Ah, uh, yeah. So that's why when I. In the run-up to finally getting around to doing Kingdom Hearts 3 last year, uh, which I've got the Platinum Trophy for as well. It's actually relatively no. it's actually relatively easy to get the Platinum for Kingdom Hearts 3. You just need the one playthrough, and once you've once you've beaten the final boss, you go through the battle gates to to get everything else, to get the um, the ultimate weapon, the ultimate keyblade, and then face the final and then f in my platinum run, which is up on my YouTube channel by the way, folks. Um uh, after going through all the battle gates, getting the rest of the trophies, I went through the I went through the final boss battle, leveled up to the max, ultimate weapon, boom. You make it sound so easy. Well, <laughs> con considering I went considering I went through Kingdom Hearts three on critical difficulty for from a platinum run, first time I actually went through a Kingdom Hearts game on critical mode, which is the hardest difficulty in the Kingdom Hearts series. The mm. the hardest difficulty I did up to that point was proud mode, which is one level down, in the original Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. Anyway. Um. But anyway. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway. Mickey Mouse, apprentice to Yen Sid. He wants to learn magic, and he he's able to learn how to he's able to learn how to do the spells, but he doesn't know how to control them and then and then all manner of chaos ensues and then and then uh, Mickey ends up falling asleep while the while the broom who which he somehow managed to bring to life uh, the buckets um, filling the buckets filling the well and then rinse and repeat Mickey doesn't know how to oh rinse and repeat off oh. That was not <laughs> that was not intentional, folks. That was not intentional. It's happened now. <laughs> I think I think definitely not in the script, folks. But but, so, but sometimes but sometimes the best on but sometimes the sometimes the funniest moments are the ones that are unscripted. Absolutely. But uh, but yeah, uh, Mickey ends up falling asleep, has a dream, and uh, oh my and oh my word, it is just. I mean. The, that that whole mini dream sequence, and just br just bringing the water up to the to match the uh, the symbols crashing together, absolutely incredible. And then and then uh, boom, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Okay, okay, Eminem aside, I know. <laughs> Eminem aside, uh, and then and then Mickey realizes, oh my word. This place is flooded. What's happened? And then he realizes the broom's still going, and 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 Mickey doesn't know how to stop it. And he and he he, he actually puts his hands out and says stop. But the broom's just like nope, just barrels through and keeps going. And then it gets to the point where Mickey's like, that's it, I've had enough. Gets an axe, chops it to pieces. Uh, but 
Without realizing it, he ended up creating an army of brooms with buckets, and it just all falls apart so quickly. Yeah, it's pretty much like Hercules chopping off the heads of the Hydra, you know? As soon as you chop one, three more grow back, that sort of thing. WILL YOU FORGET THE HEAD SLICING THING?! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Just like, uh, but on a more serious note, there's a reason that Hercules is my favourite Disney film of all time. And we'll get, again, uh, just, li just like Lion King, we'll yay. get to that shortly. Yay. Um, but yeah, um, once all that is done, it's like, um, just being surrounded by water, Mickey's going through spellbook trying to think, hang on, how do I do, how do I do this? Going through the pages, and you've got the broom, and then you've got the brooms still filling up with water, and then it gets to the point where the music just builds, speeds up, just building, 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 and then you just see him, and then you just see Mickey in this whirlpool just spinning round and round, and then Jensen's like, what? In the blue blazes is going on here, and then he finally manages to. And then we finally get the magic stopped, and um, and Yen and Yen is just like, kindly explain yourself. <laughs> or Mickey's kind of like sheepish at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, I kind of messed up at this point. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I can't fuck it up. I mean, and then and then after that. Mickey interacts with uh, the conductor himself, Mr. T Mr. Stokowski, and a huge round of applause from the orchestra as well. Yeah. And then we get into the next segment. Uh, but, uh, the music's by I uh, Igor Stravinsky. Uh, the Rite of Spring, and essentially it is... Uh, it, it's another, it's another ballet score, but it's, but the animation is a visual history of the creation of planet Earth. Spoiler alert! There's dinosaurs. Y yes, and it, it, and that's where it, that's where it all ends. It like it ends where we're going through the age of the dinosaurs, and oh my word, that T Rex is pretty. Pretty terrifying for uh, six-year-old me, but but not not. But it wasn't it wasn't that terrifying um, at the time because because uh, I was I was just fascinated with dinosaurs at the time. Who was yeah, exactly? I say, like, I say, like, um, like, what what are the biggest things I was? Um, one of the biggest things I enjoyed watching uh, on the BBC at the time was this mini series Walking with Dinosaurs. Yes. And it. Say, it is an, say, it's a marvel as far as how incredible it all is. A combination of the, the CGI and uh, the, um, the practical effects as well. Mm-hmm. And um, let's see, but there is one particular point... Uh, uh, that I want to bring up here regarding this. It's it's the battle between the Stegosaurus and uh, the T-Rex, where uh, there's uh, there's a couple of points where it's basically the same animation, where you've got the T-Rex uh, biting on the Stegosaurus's neck, and mm. and the Stegosaurus swings the tail at the T-Rex in defense. So that, that particular bit of animation is used twice in that, in that little... In, in that um, in that sequence there. Now I'm not sure if that was done to uh, save costs or not. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, but again, so as far as again as far as the uh, as far as the storytelling side of things is concerned, the music worked really well, and just combining it combining that with the animation, and it's just. It's amazing to see how. It's amazing to see the animators' um, perspective on how Earth was created. Oh yeah. And it, again, it relates to the music really well. There's kind of softer sections. You see things going quite slowly. 
whereas when the music the kind of uh, becomes more more jarring, more aggressive, you then see the the for example the fight between the dinosaurs. Yeah. And so it relates really well, and it kind of teaches the viewer. If, if they're not somebody that listens to a lot of classical music, it teaches them to relate those sorts of situations with that kind of music so that if they were to get into that profession of being a composer, they know the kind of things to look for and the things that people will easily relate to and recognise. Absolutely. And then it's and then it's after the uh, Rite of Spring uh, section, that's when, during the original release, they have a 15-minute uh, interval but that interval actually gets cut from the 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 VHS um release and then and then uh, and then before we get into the next main segment it's uh, it's a bit called meet the soundtrack where um so it, it says here uh, after the intermission there is a brief jam session of jazz music led by a clarinetist as the orchestra members return, then a humorously stylized demonstration of how sound is rendered on film is shown by an animated soundtrack called Character. Uh, initially a white, a straight white line, and it changes into different shapes and colors based on the sounds played from the various instruments. Ah. Now I'm pretty sure I've seen that before, so I'm wondering if I maybe have a weird copy of the VHS that maybe has something like that on it, or I've maybe it's maybe on my VHS of, two, of Fantasia two thousand. I can't remember, but I definitely do remember seeing that. That's it. It is. It is definitely in. It is definitely in the original Fantasia. It is definitely yeah. there. It's definitely there on the video, and it's uh, it's def uh, it's definitely there. It's been there since the uh, original uh, release. And it ah. was, and it was there on the UK VHS release because um, my mum, because my mum still has a lot of um, the Disney VHSs that she bought me and my sister growing up. So we had practically all the animated Disney films, and I'm including a few of the uh, director video sequels on, on top of all that. Don't worry, we'll get to the sequels eventually. Oh, I like a good straight to video Disney sequel. <laughs> Ooh. Or DVD in my case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, after that is done, you've got uh, another uh, prolific uh, classical music composer, Ludwig van Beethoven. Uh -huh. With uh, the Pastoral Symphony. And it's essentially a Greco Roman, basically mythical creatures. You've got centaurs, you've got cupids, fauns. And you've got and you've got all these uh, mythical gods involved as well, and it's uh, and I'm pretty sure it's split into like two or three different se uh, sections where you've got the um, the centaurs and the centaurettes on top of uh, the on top of the on top of the Pegasus like um, um, Hercules. Yeah, the the, the Pegasus like. <laughs> um, characters at the start of that whole um, segment and then transitioning into the centaurs and center uh, centaurettes now this segment when it was released it did garner a little bit of controversy because of the uh, because of the whole blackface thing at the time 298 frozen patties later you hear me and there we go we're back uh, so it seems, seems we've both been Seems we've both been plagued by technical issues today. Uh. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm trying to think. Well, where did I get, where did I get up to? Uh, Pastoral Symphony. Uh, God of Wine. Yeah, that's what it was. I say, I say, Barker's God of Wine. I'm surprised that he, I'm surprised with the amount of wine that he drank. I'm surprised he didn't end up with at uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, would such a thing have existed back in 1940? Probably. It just maybe wasn't as spoken about. It was maybe something that was kept quite under wraps, possibly. Ah, yes, of course. And uh, and then uh, the penultimate part of this uh, segment, it's, you've got 
the gathering festival, it's interrupted by Zeus, who ends up creating a storm, and it's um, it's not, and it's not just it's not just it's not just the, it's not just the, the thunder and lightning. It's, it's a lot of rain, and there's uh, a couple of um, and there's a couple of areas that end up there's a couple of buildings that end up being um, uh, destroyed because of the uh, the lightning that's been striking down. Not fun. Not yeah. Fun at all. But um, but in the end, all is well, and um, Zeus decides to uh, Zeus decides to go to sleep uh, afterwards. Uh, but not before throwing down there uh, one last lightning bolt, which he ended up uh, lying on. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. So um. The, uh, next up, we've got the Dance of the Hours, uh, which is split into four uh, different sections, basically going through an entire day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Uh, you've got... That's Oth definitely my favourite part of yeah. the entire thing of Fantasia. Yeah. It's my favourite bit. You've got ost ostriches, you've got hippos, you've got elephants, and you've got blooming alligators as well. Yeah. I mean... What a bizarre combination. It works though. Yeah. And again, again, music wise, it's another piece of music that's been used on a number of occasions as well. Mm -hmm. and, I th and I think that goes to show how big an impact this film had, not just as far as music is concerned, but as far as pop culture is concerned as well. Yeah. Because um, several of the ostriches and the main hippo is also... In uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. And I remember watching it with... Um, I think it was maybe a friend of mine's little brothers or little sister or something. Yeah. I remember them going, why is, the, why is there a hippo? Why is there an ostrich in that there? I was like, ah, well, you need to watch Fantasia and get yourself an education. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Uh, but yeah. And uh, now, this is definitely another iconic... <laughs> Uh, segment and it's um uh, be prepared for nightmare fuel as far as this part is concerned yeah. folks we finally get to night on bald mountain oh oh boy the where to begin with this one it's great for those who celebrate Halloween every day let's put it that way that that is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, not pointing any, not pointing fingers at any uh, particular uh, Disney character. <clears throat> Jack Skellington. He's my boy. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, um, you think you've got the devil Chernabog awakens, summons evil spirits, restless souls, um, and the and these spirits dance, flying through the air. And this is where you also have another brief moment of uh, unity, just like in the uh, Pastoral Symphony earlier on. Um, yeah. and, and one thing, another thing I mentioned during the Pastoral Symphony, uh, that it garnered a bit of controversy, not just because of the nudity, but for the Pastoral Symphony especially, the, um, the whole blackface uh, thing. Yeah. It, uh, definitely not something that definitely not something that's aged well um, and uh, and it's no wonder why uh, song of the South has never been released on home media in the US but um, but it's a lucky job that uh, us here in the UK we got it on VHS in the 90s and my mum has a copy nice they'll say uh, and, uh, who knows how much that's gonna go for, um, if any Americans are wanting to buy it. Who knows? I know that definitely there's a massive market for even just buying, um, original, 
uh, Disney uh, VHS um, yeah. copy films. And there's particularly a, a kind of diamond collection where the, I think it's either the Disney logo or it's the logo of the film is inside a diamond on the spine of the VHS. I personally don't have any of those, but I've seen them online and I've seen how ridiculous um, people are willing to be to pay money for them, and it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, as I, as I, as I, the VHS is, um, uh, for any collectors out there, definitely some uh, collector's items, definitely. Uh, of course, VHSs, they will wear down all the time. Yeah. It's, ine- it's, it's inevitable. Unfortunately. But, um, but yeah, um, but, but like I say, Chernobog is just nightmare fuel incarnate. And this is back in 1940, before Scar, before Judge Claude Frollo, before anybody like that. And then, and then we get to the final part, which is Ave Maria, which closes out the film altogether. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a chorus singing Ave Maria with a line of robed monks depicted as walking with torches through a forest into the ruins of a cathedral. I would imagine Chernobog would have destroyed the cathedral uh, overnight. You'd think so. Yeah. But of course, that's left up to the um, the audience's imagination whether Chernobog did actually destroy that cathedral or not. Anyway, so that's all out of the way. So we've got we've basically gone through the entire film now. Now, mm-hmm. moments of truth. How do we rank each of the subjects out of 10. Now, story, that's how do, how do you rank how do you rank a story out of 10? 10 being really good, 10 being uh, one being really bad. How do you rank it when it's just sh- when it's just short? How do you do it? How do you go about that? Um, you can maybe rank it as a, a collective if it's a, a maybe decent is the wrong word, um, an appropriate or um, a, a memorable, uh, or well, even just well put together mm-hmm. series of shorts, I suppose. If um, you kind of look at what mm-hmm. the animators and the composers, etc., were wanting to do with this 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 feature length uh, film, uh, yeah. where they want to educate, where they wanting to entertain, all yep. of the above, something else I can't think of. Mm-hmm. And you can maybe just take that and you kind of go, okay, did they manage to do that? And you can yeah. maybe rate that. So, yeah. Uh, so this is definitely going to be interesting considering, uh, like I mentioned at the start of the episode, that I that I had no notes prepared for this whatsoever. But um, took it in stride and uh, here we are. So overall, as a as an overall package, um, the... The story the animators were able to tell with the animation uh, to go with the music, it's amazing how they managed to come up with such creative ideas to go with the music. Mm-hmm. So I would, so I think I would definitely have, I would definitely have to give it a 10 for that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, characters now. Um... Now, again, this again, this is a... sorry. There's definitely a wide enough range of characters throughout this. You don't get a lot of the same kind of character. You get some mm-hmm. almost something completely different with each short. Yeah. So, yeah, with all that, yeah, so because I mean, I mean, you've got I mean, you've got the first segment, which is based, which is just um, just abstract animation to go with the music to give you an idea of what's in store for the rest of the film. Uh, then you've got everything we've mentioned in Nutcracker Suite, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Yen Sid, uh, Mickey, the the broom. Um, and then you've got the then you've got the dinosaurs in the Rite of Spring, then you've got the mythical creatures in the Pastoral Symphony, the ostriches, elephants, the alligators, the hippos, Chernobog, all that. 
they all, I mean, it's something I, that's something I can't fault either. So that one's definitely a 10 as well. Yeah, I, I think so. Because each story is different, they each have their own story to tell. They've got their own message. They've got their own uh, sort of goal that they wish to achieve. And I think the characters suit really well for, for each of those. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean um, the, um, the visuals, de definitely a 10. I mean, I mean, not much else can be said. Not much else can be said beyond that. No, you can't fault that. Mm -hmm. And 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 you can't. I mean, I, ca I can't even. I can't even. I can't even fault the soundtrack either. No. <laughs> so. Either. I mean, but this, but this is probably the interesting part here. Could we be on course for only the third episode? Uh, second one I'm recording, but the third one when Pinocchio gets out. But. We'll deal with that. Um, will are we on course for a full? Are we on course for a perfect score here? I think we might. I think we might. The I really, I personally cannot find a fault with this film at all. And normally I am. Normally I am a massive stickler for finding small details so that. I don't come across as somebody that's like, yes, that's perfect, it's my favourite film, yes, tens across the board. But with this particular film, I can't find a fault. I mean, apart from the blackface, apart from that. Yeah. But that was cut. So. Yeah, that 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 was cut. That was cut for the VHS release uh, in the UK. That was cut, um, and the the nudity was censored. So they, they did take the necessary steps to make it suitable for home viewing so yep. i give them that but as far as overall test of time is concerned the legacy this film has created in the same way that snow white in general the legacy that left behind it changed the course of filmmaking completely an elevated animation essentially into an art form yeah and fantasia is a perfect example of combining two art forms and crafting absolute magic out of them it's just a shame that not a lot of people talk about it not a lot of people seem to know about it because a lot of people that i've spoken to uh within the different communities that i belong to within the performing arts within of course uh, cosplay etc a lot of people are like, no, I've not seen Fantasia. I don't even know what Fantasia is. And I'm going, why? What? Blasphemy! How can you not know? But I get, I get that with a lot of people that tell me about movies and I don't know about them. So, you know, I kind of get the feeling. Yeah. So. I think we're going to have to give it a perfect score. Yep. Yeah. M. Bison, would you kindly do the honours? I, w I will. Ha I will. Uh, I was like, you'll see. You'll see once I've put it. Uh, put this all together. Um, you you'll see. You'll see the particular uh, clip that I'm using for uh, M Bison. Uh, you'll say M Bison. One of the, one of the uh, one of the boss characters in uh, Street Fighter. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yes, I like my video games as well. Uh, but anyway, yeah. There you go, folks. First perfect score of. Um, First perfect score from what I've recorded, but will Pinocchio be able to do the same? I'll see if I can get that recorded uh, either uh, shortly or at some point uh, tomorrow. Um, but yeah, um, so you've got so you guys have two episodes uh, this week to uh, look forward to. Um, I've already got my guest lined up for uh, uh, Pinocchio. Um, I will say this, as a person in general, they are just one of the most positive people that I've ever met. And I cannot fault, I cannot fault the positivity that they are able to express. Uh, but yeah, that is it. I'll, that is it. We've got a full 100% here. Um, but yeah. 
So yeah, that is it uh, for uh, today's episode of uh, Kingdom of Isolation, where we isolate ourselves in the magic of Disney. The next film we are going to be covering, once I get the notes up and running, uh, the next episode, once I've got uh, Pinocchio and this up on there, my channel as well. Uh, it will be Dumbo, but I haven't got a guest lined up for that yet. But I'm sure I'll be able to find someone to um, review Dumbo with. Perfect. So, so yeah, all that's left to say is uh, hope you guys enjoyed um, what um, what you saw today. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with this series, you can hit the subscribe button at the bot uh, down at the bottom of the screen, and you can click that notification that uh, notification bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad, so you don't miss anything I do on this uh, channel. Um, I say I might get ready to do Pinocchio shortly, or I might wait till tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, Tegan, thanks very much for. Um, uh, for joining me uh, today, I'll be sure to get you on board for Fantasia 2000. Yay! Thanks for having me! It has been a pleasure to have you on board today. Yeah. So, with all that in mind, um, enjoy the rest of your day, folks, and we will see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>